the Royal Rifles of Canada, there were 53 from Richmond, Cascapedia, St. Jules. 53 of us. 10 were killed in battle. Three, were, three died in prison camp. You want to hear that story? My uh, name is Phil Doddridge. On July 29th, 1940, I uh, joined the Royal Rifles. My regimental number was E29986. And the rifle that I carried for, well, until it was taken away from me, the number was I59544. Well, I was the second youngest of a family of seven. Born on a, and brought up on a, a mixed farm. Well, of course, I was 17, 18, and didn't know much about the world or anything about it. One evening, we're strolling down Main Street, and we came to the um, Cascapedia House Hotel, and uh, there was a sign in the window, join the army. We went in, and we were signed up. I don't recall, maybe we were probably a day or so before we got on the train to go to Quebec. Then we went and joined the rest of the regiment in Balcarche. It wasn't very fancy, it was, we were given a, uh, <laughs> a, a big uh, mattress cover and pointed to a pile of straw and said, Use it sparingly because you uh, don't put too much in because it'll lump and make you uncomfortable. But that was the same on straw. Left, right, left, right. We, we did basic training there. I remember uh, kids swimming in the harbor off, right off the ship. And the sampans, of course, crowded with families, and sampans lined up uh, 15 or 20 deep. And it struck me that the guy that lived in the furthest away would have to cross all the ones in between to get to shore. And of course, the families lived on, on the, the, uh, those little boats the year round. And uh, Marching up Nathan Road to Shamshapo Barracks. It was probably three miles, I guess. Yeah, the food was pretty good. We we uh, learned what kippers were and and uh, fish for breakfast with something that I'd never I'd never done before. And of course, we had. Um, uh, Servants that would come in and shave you in bed and uh, polish your boots and make your bed and make sure your mosquito net was tucked in and all that. And uh, the story goes that they turned out to be Japanese implants, Japanese spies. Maybe they were. The first day, we were taking, we were ordered to go and defend Mount. Oh, geez, I guess Bridge Hill. I, I was. I've never, I, I, I'm always confused about the names of the, the different peaks on the, on the island. But it was Bridge Hill, I guess. Um, anyway, we walked up the water catchment about, oh gee, it must have been a mile up to the top of the hill. And um, we were overlooking the reservoir and a, and a bridge across the reservoir. And the Japanese troops were crossing the bridge. There was some uh, horses or mules, mules probably, and um, some armored vehicles as well, and some troops on foot. And uh, the fighting started, and um, they were firing at us with um, uh, six inch mortars, or mortars, I think of six inch mortars. And uh, 
several of our guys got killed there, and we had to we had to retreat and. Or, well, we were just overwhelmed, I said. And um, I remember Jim Dare, of course, was shot through the... Yeah, he got a bullet through the leg, and, and he, we carried him out. Somebody had brought a, a ground sheet. So we wrapped that around two rifles anyway, made a, a makeshift stretcher. Now, Jim Dare was a big man. He, he probably weighed 200 pounds, and he, he was over six feet tall. So you can imagine now, his head was hanging over one end and his wounded leg over the other end. And uh, we carried him down the, the water catchment. And I guess what happened when he when we got to the bottom, I, I don't recall. I know that I was exhausted. You see, the water catchment was is about... Uh, I'll say four feet deep, but it's, it's hardly that. Hardly four feet deep. And now we're carrying this man. We couldn't carry him too low because the water was rising and it would, he would have drowned, of course. And at the same time, we couldn't stand up and carry him because we'd be shot. So it was a pretty difficult trip. Anyway, we got to the bottom. Well, the night, it, it, it got dark eventually before we got to the bottom, so I guess that saved us. The next episode that I, that's in my memory is look, going to look for uh, Lieutenant Simons. I, I started walking along the road and, I, and uh, this chap came along, his name was uh, Rob Lee. I forget his first name. Anyway, he had commandeered a truck, a big three-ton truck. So I got in with him and away we went after... We got to Repulse Bay Hotel, and then on the way back, we ran into a wall, and I got my head banged up a bit, and I was bleeding, and so he took me back to the hotel, and there was a nurse there that patched me up, and uh, tried to persuade me to stay there, and I said, no, I have to go, I have to, I have to find Reggie Simons. So I started back, and uh, on foot. And it uh, seems to me I met Bob Boudreau. Anyway, we uh, we hit ourselves on a on a on a uh, pillbox on the roof. Bob wanted to go in the pillbox, and I said, "No, oh, we better not because it'd be too damn dangerous." Because the Japs were all around us at that point. So we we we. Uh, slept on the top, and we uh, the Japs moved away after a while, and we were able to sleep. So, I was still looking for Reggie Simons, and I never did find him. The next big episode, of course, I, I found myself in on the 24th of December with the rest of the regiment. I finally somehow got back to them, by which means I don't recall. Um, anyway, we, we got to to Stanley Fort, and um, the Japs had our our our, uh, our ticket. Of course, they knew where we were, and they were one well, where they were they were shelling us in in the Fort at Stanley, and the next day, and this is something that is really, I find very stupid. But anyway, we were we were told that there were fifteen Japs in in Stanley Village, and we had to go and route them out. So away we went. There were more than fifteen Japs there. 
and that was the that was on Christmas Day, and that was the end of the the end of the fight. It was mainly a, a, a D company, and uh, by that time our, our ranks had diminished, of course, from 125, which is full strength, more or less. Uh, there were probably I don't know, I'll say 110 or maybe officers that went, and uh, 45 of us came back. Oh, what a, what a, what a schmuzzle. We left the, the fort, of course, and it turned in our, our rifles and, and um, set off marching behind a, uh, a, a truck with those Japanese soldiers set up in the back of the truck with a troop with a machine gun trained on us and I happened to be in the front rank for one reason I, I, I don't know. But I, I was looking right into the the muzzle of the machine gun the whole way down. And uh, it uh, as we there were dead bodies along the way of course uh, um, because the battle had just finished and there was you know it was pretty much of a, a mess everywhere. Arrived at North Point Camp. Now North Point Camp was just a um, a flat area on, le on reclaimed ground and fenced in by barbed wire, and uh, it had been used as a refugee camp for um, Chinese refugees moving south, and uh, there was all kinds of debris lying around, horse manure and broken bottles and all kinds of junk, a filthy place. And um, anyway, we were herded into a barracks there. There were long, long wooden huts with no furniture in the huts and a cement floor. And all we had with us, of course, is what we carried, which was as I recall, uh, one blanket. So then we set up residence there.